So this evening, um, we we chanted the Anapanasati Sutta, and of course it's a it's a very important teaching on its own. But uh, I think one very important principle uh, that that uh, is highlighted in that. Uh, in that discourse is the um, um, is out of the 16 steps of, of uh, mindfulness of breathing 14 of them have the uh, the verb sikati and of course when we're chanting it in Pali uh, then it uh, it's, just, it's noticeable uh, how often this uh, this verb comes up, and because uh, in English it's sort of you say he trains thus, one trains thus, and so just that importance of of training, and uh, but also the the verb sikati means also to study or to learn. Um, train. Um, so these are. Uh, this is a a, a principle uh, that's uh, essential for Buddhist practice. Is that we are um, learning from our experience. We're studying our experience. We're uh, training with the things that we do experience, and. Uh, it isn't a matter of of uh, just trying to achieve some kind of uh, ideal or trying to force the mind into some sort of mold of some way, shape, or form, but to learn, uh, to study, to understand our experience. And when we think of our experience or how do we gain experience of course that's our that is our six senses the um, our avenue of learning is through sight sound smell taste touch through the mind door itself. So we have to learn how to pay attention uh, to the sense experience. And we have to learn from it. We have to um, rely on it. Uh, it's not a matter of uh, if only these pesky sense experiences would just go away so I could be peaceful. Uh, that isn't how it works. Um, these are the things that are teaching us. Uh, these are the things that we have to learn from. Um, but, uh, it was actually a, 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 a 
teaching that Ajahn Chah gave to a, a monk who was uh, in one of the branch monasteries and, and uh, um, feeling one separated from Ajahn Chah. He was at a branch monastery quite far away and uh, uh, he was missing Ajahn Chah, uh, missing being uh, in his presence and having his example. Um, and he was probably um, a bit uh, maybe disappointed in the the uh, say the the example that he was receiving. But then he was, uh, but so he was. Ajahn Chah went to visit at one point, and he was um, complaining to Ajahn Chah of how uh, he felt he didn't. You know, he was so far away from his teacher and uh, uh, wasn't getting good support. And Ajahn Chah said, you know, said you know, that's really thinking wrongly uh, because um, here you've got everything you need and you, it's not that you have only one teacher, you've got six teachers. And uh, it was... And of course, the monk was said, what do you mean, six teachers? And he didn't get it at first. And he said that, uh, of course, Ajahn Chah, of course you have six teachers. You've got your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. these are your six teachers. If you're not learning from these six teachers, then you're, you're missing a, a great opportunity. So and those are the teachers that we have all the time, and we have to... Um, uh, learn from them, whether it's, uh, um, say, what we experience is pleasant or unpleasant, whether it's something that we like or we dislike or we want or we don't want, um, we have to learn from it, understand it. And, it's, and it isn't as if we can somehow magically uh, practice Dhamma, become awakened to the Dhamma and never have to experience anything unpleasant ever again. Uh, that, that, uh, that doesn't happen in this universe, uh, this world system. Um, even the Buddha, uh, had, I mean, he had his six, sens uh, six, six senses in the same way that we do. Um, he experienced things that were both pleasant and unpleasant. Um, he certainly had to undergo his own uh, say difficulties, um, criticism, um, but he didn't suffer. Uh, I think that, that's probably a big difference. We've got six senses, and we manage to suffer over just about anything that it throws at us. So um, that's the that's the learning that we we have to uh, uh, come up with, and 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 that is this sikati training, um, learning, uh, understanding, studying what happens when we experience something through the senses, through the sense doors, what, what, uh, uh, what takes place, what reaction comes up, what habit pattern do we follow, what avenue of skillfulness or unskillfulness um, arises. So this is what we have to to, to study, this is what we have to learn. And it's it, taking those, the sense experience and being willing to, to investigate uh, and, uh, and understand that those, those patterns uh, of, of reaction. Um, there's a, uh, um, a set of teachings that the Buddha gives um, 
that are called uh, the biases in, in the Pali, the um, akati, uh, which is uh, um, the literally mean, yeah, it's usually translated as bias, I think it literally means leaning, so that the uh, uh, the mind leans with with uh, uh, with certain tendencies, propensities in certain ways. Uh, the, in the Pali, chandakati, dosakati, mohakati, bhayakati. So, biased or leaning with desire, with r aversion with delusion, with fear. And those are the, the ways that the, the mind leans or ends up biased. And of course, it, once it starts leaning, it falls over and, and uh, we end up suffering. So to be able to, to um, establish uh, this quality of uh, Mindfulness, clear comprehension, a re reflective investigation of our sense experience, so that we're 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 understanding when the mind starts to lean or starts to become biased in certain ways, as those aspects of uh, of desire that seeking gratification, seeking. Um, 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 you know, pleasurable sensation, and it's not that um, it's not that we can't can't experience anything pleasurable. Um, but it's when we start to lean or be biased because of it. And we, we end up following it, getting attached to it, getting complicating things with because that's I mean I think of the uh, um, you think of the suttas where um, uh, the Buddha or so I mean it's one tomorrow when we, we do the uh, uh, the Upasika day there'll be uh, it's in a, in a, in one of the Readings where the the uh, the Buddha is um, uh, it, it, it's a discourse on his uh, um, his search for uh, awakening, and uh, he sees the uh, place to uh, he sees a place to to, to, to practice and and. Uh, um, and it's a, it's a, you know, it's like a, this pleasing grove of trees with a, 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 a stream right next nearby. Um, it sort of, it's a, it's a, the the village is is in a suitable distance. Um, it, it, everything is sort of pleasant about it. And this, and this, this is a pleasing setting, a place to strive for awakening. Um, so it isn't as if the Buddha is sort of uh, looking for, um, you know, how to live in, uh, looking for some, for his uh, his suitable place for awakening as a a uh, some, you know, disgust disgusting garbage dump somewhere by a, a uh, uh, um, in the middle of a city uh, where it's it's uh, everything is unpleasant so then it'll be suitable for practice you can experience what is pleasant uh, you can experience uh, and you know it's a part of our experience but the problem is the leaning uh, and uh, and similar, isn't it? as if uh, we never experience anything that we 
dislike um, uh, or something that is unpleasant. Um, you know, the, uh, but it's not being overwhelmed by it, caught up in it, um, uh, reacting uh, in a negative way because of it. Uh, it's that, that's the nature of, of, uh, of, a, uh, um, of sense experience. It's just understanding its nature uh, allows us to s sustain clarity and stability within whatever experience there is. And it's, of course, we have to learn from that. And this is what this verb, sikati, of training, of learning, taking our experience, bringing it in, understanding it, and not creating a problem, not creating dukkha. Um, there's a time when Ajahn Chah, one of his teachings that he gave, um, talked of, uh, um, um, at, at that monastery that he was at, there was a, a monkey that had been given. And, um, you know, whoever gave a monkey to a monastery, it's not good karma. But <laughs> they are a pain in the butt. They're, you know, they're, you know, they're really mischief mischievous, and uh, they're getting into everything, and uh, they're quite disruptive. But uh, Ajahn Chah was, was sort of saying, yeah, well, you know, it's like this monkey. It's... Uh, it's uh, they can't. They can't sit still. They can't just be, be, be peaceful. I said, but I, if you know a monkey is like that, why would you bother to get upset with them? All right? And you just you know one monkey, and you know every single monkey on the planet. And you see, so in the same way, like knowing our knowing experience in the world is like this. There is the pleasant, there is the unpleasant, there is the that which we like, that which we dislike. There's all those inclinations, uh, there's all that range of experience that we receive through sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, mental states themselves. There's no, if we s see it and understand it, there's, there's no reason to make ourselves suffer over it, other than our our own delusion uh, and our our uh, um, say lack of learning, lack of training, lack of of uh, um, uh, you know, willingness to study it so that we can take it to the point of freedom. Now, that's, now that is awakening. Um, that, that ability to, s when we experience and to see it so clearly and understand it, that we, we don't get caught in it. We don't get caught in that cycle of, uh, of suffering. We don't get caught in the cycle of, say, of, of attachment. Uh, uh, attachment and clinging, because it's our our, our, our clinging that uh, and attachment that that is is really the is is kind of the root of the problem. And are these propensities or tendencies that uh, for the mind to lean in certain ways? That sort of leaning, yeah, you know, that leaning with desire, and getting hooked and caught in the tendencies of 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 aversion or delusion, confusion, fear. Um, uh, but it's the, it's the, the, that a, attachment and, uh, and clinging to that in the sense that, because either trying to maintain it in a certain way, prop it, prop it up in a certain way, or pushing it away 
It shouldn't be this way. Uh, don't want it to be that way. The uh, uh, those that the attachment of of either a rejection or uh, or that that you know, hanging on to trying to uh, maintain it, prop it up, gratify ourselves with it in some way. So that 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 attachment is is a uh, uh, recognizing how the mind attaches to a sense experience. Uh, and then starts to starts to spin with it in some way, you know, whether it's uh, either with the, the attachment of 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 uh, uh, say of, of greed or or trying to prop it up in terms of a sense of self. This is me, um, uh, or out of a, 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 a attachment with uh, the aversion or fear, trying to push it away. Um, they, they, that, that tendency to, uh, to, to attachment is, is the, uh, uh, is where, where it just keeps getting sticky. And, and the, the, uh, um, and the way that, that, you know, say working with attachment in the sense of, and I think this is where it's at, like in meditation to really pay attention to, because uh, things come when we sit down and try to make the mind quiet. You know what comes up in the mind? It'll usually be what we've just fairly recently just got attached to, you know, in, in some way, shape, or form. It resonates in the mind something that we've been we've been t had this conversation and kind of reverberates in the mind. We had this reaction. And it's still sort of rolling through the mind. You know, there, we have this sort of plan of how we're going to get something in a certain way, and it's still reverberating in the mind. And it's, it's attachment. Just learning how to, to um, even like visualizing sometimes how to not make it sticky, how to let it go, how to release. Um, and so that, that, that sense of releasing and relinquishing um, and letting that play uh, a part in that in that training, and sikati training uh, with relinquishing, releasing, letting go, uh, non-attachment. And you know, I think it's uh, important to to uh, uh, reflect on. On the, just that that aspect of attachment, in the sense of um, the in the, in the Thai language, it's it's uh, um, it's kind of uh, there's an interesting way that that say the verb to for attachment is more like holding. Um, Firmly grasping firmly, and and so that when Ajahn Chah talks about, um, say attachment, it's it's he said it, it's not that you don't hold or 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 grasp anything, it's just that you don't do it firmly. He says because you have to, you actually have to um, say you like that you my man. Because in in Thai, Thai is yut man, yut man to man, and it's the problem is that 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 man in the sense of that firmness or that that tightness uh, that we do it with, is it because you have to you have to grasp onto the training, you have to grasp onto the practice in order to implement it, stick with it, to play with it, to understand it and without that 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 picking it up and holding it so that you can see it clearly they say like a sense experience you're picking up a sense experience and 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 uh, being able to see it clearly and seeing it for what it is it, 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 things don't go away just because you ignore them or negate them 
uh, our our reactions don't just disappear because um, we're we're not uh, we're not aware of them. Uh, they'll sort of happily uh, trundle along in the background until something comes up. So that we have to lift things up in the mind and and to pay attention to it, reflect on it, uh, learn from it, understand. So this verb sikati of of training, of studying, of learning, uh, is something we, we have to pay attention to, uh, and and uh, and and particularly just using the sense experience as a as as a way of recognizing. Well, what is it? Where's the complication? Where's the difficulty? Because just because we see something doesn't mean it has to be a problem, or that we hear something. It's not that it's a problem, or any of the other senses. But they're just what they are. Um, but it's understanding uh, its potential. And similarly, that, that's because sometimes the, the ability to, say, to reflect on our experience gives us a, a, a better insight into the in, into how to how, how to be free how to be how to be peaceful uh, how to be steady and and and, uh, and, uh, and 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 maintain that, that sort of a grounded uh, quality in in whatever we are experiencing so that the the, uh, the 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 cultivation of our mindfulness and the reflective uh, discernment uh, is something that we we have to keep working at whether it's in our formal meditation or or it's in our our day to day life uh, that continuity of of, of awareness and, and 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 discernment, so that 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 that, that sense of, of awareness is is because some of you say if we're if we're say in a in a moment to moment day to day life, you know we have to pick a a, a point of attention. And and to be to get some continuity of attention, uh, that continuity of mindfulness, so that there's a clarity. So whether it's uh, say in our posture, in our uh, sensation, uh, sensation of the breath itself, um, uh, something that helps that continuity of attention to arise. And certainly in the uh, say informal meditation and the awareness of of a, of a meditation object, the sensation of the breath, um, uh, just keeping that continuity of attention in. And, but the focus isn't so tight that one's blocking out anything. It's, but it's, what it's doing is it's, it's creating that stable point of, of clarity that is then alert to what whatever else we're experiencing. Uh, so you can think of it in terms of say like a, a uh, uh, you know, one is building this sort of focus of attention and, but its effect is felt through us. That's like a, say like a, a, a spider in its web. Um, and the spider is it builds its web, um, and however big or however small, uh, and it's at one point in this web. But wherever the uh, there is uh, some contact um, on that uh, on that that web, that, that 
the the spider is 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 alert to that. It it uh, it it uh, it's able to experience that, and, and that's what we're with our 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 understanding of our senses is that we take say the mindfulness of the breathing, and it's one point. But then um, anything that we see, hear, smell, taste, touch, or experience in the mind, we can be alert to that. And so that's the, uh, that's how awareness functions. That's how mind, mindfulness functions. Um, it has that ability to spread out and be, uh, create a quality of clarity. Because we have to train with that. We have to learn from that. Uh, or just by say like they they're having a uh, a candle or a, a a light in the in the room it's just a point of light but it cr it creates a say an ambient light around it so that we can see everything and discern everything around it so that it's it's a uh, uh, this is a a natural function or natural experience so that in our in our own minds or in our own practice, um, picking up a point of reflection, and so whether it's a a uh, uh, whether it's a contact with the sense like mindfulness of breathing, or a a particular reflection, uh, contemplation of impermanence, or, but don't get so locked into it that you're shutting everything else out. Allow it to, allow that mindfulness and awareness to start to include everything. But not include in the sense of reacting to it or getting swept up by it, but in a sense we're learning from it. We're training with it. We're understanding it. This is our, say, our field of study. So I'll offer that for reflection this evening.